Hi, I hope you are doing well. I'm the Amateur Logician, and we're going to consider the modern square of opposition. Now, modern logic defines all and some differently than Aristotelian scholastic logic. The result is that all forms of opposition, minus contradictory opposition between A versus O type propositions or E versus I type propositions, become logically undetermined. And that's because universal propositions don't imply the subjects existence. Whereas particular propositions do imply the subject's existence. And modern logic does this such that universal propositions are taken as hypothetical or conditional, whereas particular propositions, so-called existential propositions, do claim that the subject really or actually exists. For example, take the proposition, all unicorns have horns. Should we treat that proposition as true or false? Now, on the one hand, we might think it's false because there are no unicorns in existence. So how can all unicorns have horns? Is it not a false statement, a false proposition? But if we treat that as a conditional, a hypothetical, that doesn't imply actual existence, it seems to be true. If unicorns exist, then those unicorns will have horns. So in fact, we're going to treat this proposition as true. Take the proposition, no unicorns have horns. Should we treat that proposition as true or false? Well, there are no unicorns in actual existence, so should we treat it as false? But on the other hand, if we did treat it as false, would that not imply by contradictory opposition that some unicorns have horns is true? And didn't we just say that we're going to treat particular propositions as applying the subject's existence and unicorns don't exist? So if we know that I, in fact, must be false, if we know that some unicorns have horns is false because that proposition does imply existence, this must mean that no unicorns have horns is true. Finally, consider some unicorns have no horns. Well, since that type of proposition implies existence and unicorns don't actually exist, we must treat this proposition as false. Notice that when we compare this to the traditional square of opposition, the only rule that holds deals with contradictory relationships. The E versus I have opposite truth values. Since E is true, I is false. Likewise, the contradictory opposition between A and O holds. Given that A is true, O is false. But the contrary relationship between A and E does not hold, because in the traditional square of opposition, you cannot have both A and E being true, but with the modern square of opposition, it is possible. Similarly, with subcontrary relation, when we're dealing with I versus O, one of them has to be true in the traditional square of opposition, you cannot have both being false, but in the modern square of opposition, both can, in fact, be false. Moreover, in terms of alternate relation with A and I, just because A is true, it doesn't mean that I must be true. And again, note that that goes against the traditional square of opposition. Likewise, with the alternate relation between E and O, just because E is true, that does not imply that O is true. So we have a radically different kind of square of opposition because we're treating and interpreting these propositions very differently. Predicate logic. The A type of proposition, the universal affirmative proposition, all unicorns have horns, will be translated as follows. For all x, if x is a unicorn, then x has a horn. Notice that it's a conditional. We have a conditional statement. For all x, if x is a unicorn, then x has a horn. 
the E type of proposition, no unicorns have horns, is for all x. If x is a unicorn, then it is not the case that x has a horn. The I type of proposition, some unicorns have horns, implies existence. So we say there exists an x such that x is a unicorn and x has a horn. And for the O type of proposition, we would say there exists an x such that x is a unicorn and it is not the case that x has a horn. So with these universal propositions, we have that conditional. It's a hypothetical. And with the particular propositions, we have something that implies existence. But this raises a philosophical question in logic. Is the modern standpoint a superior interpretation? Is the modern square of opposition superior than the traditional square of opposition? I'm not entirely sure. There are arguments to be had on both sides. However, is it really necessary to introduce the notion of existential import at all? We can entirely entertain propositions in our mind without considering that import. No unicorns exist. That's totally granted. But why does the proposition some unicorns are male imply existence, whereas all unicorns are one-horned horses does not imply existence? Can both propositions be perfectly well entertained without having to imply existence? It's also the case, I would say, that in the scholastic tradition, that existence is an analogous term. For example, I exist. My height exists, even though my height is just an accident that presupposes the substance me existing. Finally, ideas exist in a way, they exist in my mind, right? Or your mind. Does a unicorn exist? No. Not in the usual sense of the term existence. It does nevertheless have existence in my mind. So the concept of existence, really in traditional logic, one might say, when it's grounded to an older style metaphysics, has a more broad meaning. But regardless, in Aristotelian scholastic logic, with the traditional square of opposition, we don't treat universal propositions as hypothetical. If we have something like all men are mortal, that implies that some men are mortal. But in modern logic, it would be claimed that we have a so-called existential fallacy. That is to say, we cannot infer from this proposition this proposition, the I proposition. But it's not fallacious on the Aristotelian scholastic account since it doesn't treat or define the A or E type of propositions as hypothetical. But in any case, I hope this introductory video has been helpful to you. If it has, please consider giving it a like, and I'll see you soon 